Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about nuclear physics. Okay, let's talk a little bit about atomic nucleus. Atomic nucleus has had an important impact on our society. It has got several applications. One of the important applications is the archaeological dating, um, which is to determine the aging or age of the fossils, the technique so-called um, earlier carbon dating. And also, it has got uh, wonderful applications in the di diagnosis and treatment of cancer and other diseases. And also, it is used for determining the structure of the organic compounds, which is uh, in turn called as the chemical analysis. And then it is also used in radiation damage and synthesis of the nuclear bombs. And uh, it is also used in the generation of electricity in the form of fission and fusion reactions. Um, so in this top in this chapter we'll be focusing um, these uh, these few headings which is the symbols of the elements we'll talk about the discovery of the nucleus atomic nucleus ra radioactivity and their half-life and then nuclear reactions under which we'll also be seeing the fusion and fusion reactions and then what are elementary particles so let's get started with the uh, discovery of the atomic nucleus so um, the Greek philosophers who lived between 600 to 200 BC, they were the first ones to speculate about what basic substance or substances make up the ma make up matter. So Aristotle, who is also a Greek philosopher uh, of the 14th century BC, of the 4th century BC, uh, he said uh, that the matter on the earth is composed of one or more of these four elements. And the four elements are earth, air, fire, water, but he was actually wrong on all the four counts. So later it was discovered that all matter is actually made of atoms which has subatomic particles and these subatomic particles are called as protons, neutrons and electrons. So each element is made of a specific type of atom. So early uh, 1800s, it was the Swedish uh, chemist Jones Jacob Berzelius who used the symbol notation to designate the different elements. So he used one or two letters of the Latin name to represent each element. So for example if you take sodium, sodium was actually designated as Na. Uh, the, the symbol Na comes from the Latin name Natrium and similarly silver uh, is designated as AG, which comes from the Latin name Argentum. So these are some examples for uh, two-letter symbols that are also elements which has a single alphabet uh, as the symbol. So some examples would include uh, carbon, C for carbon, and B for boron. Okay, so periodic. let's go on to the periodic table. The periodic table actually shows the position of the element element and as well as the name uh, in which is designated as a symbol. And there are totally 118 elements out of which 114 elements are named officially. And uh, the one, the periodic table which you see right here is actually the periodic table that was proposed by Aristotle taking into consideration that all elements is actually made of one of those four elements, uh, which is earth, water, air, and fire. But actually, this is the periodic table that we are following currently, and it is called as the, mod called as the modern periodic table, which has all the 118 elements in it. Of course, I don't want you guys to remember all the names and as well as the symbol, but you guys should definitely be uh, very familiar with the most common ones. So here is the table for your reference. So now let's go into the details of the atom. Matter is made of atoms, but what is the atom made of? Atom is actually made of subatomic particles, and these subatomic particles are called as electrons, protons, and neutrons. As we know, that the electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutrally charged. And the protons and the neutrons are collectively called as nucleons. And they have uh, pretty much the same mass. 
in fact they are going to be about 2000 times heavier than electrons so when you consider the mass of the electrons um in comparison to the mass of the protons and neutrons they are actually negligibly small